Welcome to Taylor's tour. After visiting the beautiful Hobart region, we are heading north to tour around Devonport and the nearby areas. There are a few different options to travel north, and they are all good, depends on personal preference. During our last round trip 20 years ago, we traveled west stopping by the beautiful Strom and Cradle Mountain before reaching the north. Some people choose to travel along the eastern coast towards the north. Today, we decided to take the inland route through the central highlands to visit that great lake, Australia's second largest freshwater lake, before reaching Devonport. The central highlands boasts glorious scenery and dramatic built heritage dating back to the early 19th century. It is the birthplace of Tasmania's hydroelectric power system and home to the best trout fishing in Southern Hemisphere. The Central Highlands covers 8,010 square kilometers, or 12% of Tasmania's land mass, has a permanent population of over 2,000 around the region's numerous spectacular lakes and mountains. The Central Plateau Conservative Area is a wild place of sub-alpine moorlands and many mountain lakes on the northern edge of the Central Highlands. It is in the isolated heart of Tasmania and is unserviced by the state's major road network other than the A5. This area is also known as the land of a thousand lakes, with excellent fishing and stunning alpine scenery, and it forms part of the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area. This is Deloraine, a charming town of the central north of Tasmania. Along the Minder River, you just have to love this stunning view. From here, it is 50 kilometers to Launceston on the east, 52 kilometers to Devonport on the north, and 93 kilometers to Cradle Mountain on the west. After about four hours of driving and stopping, we arrived at Holly Beach. We rented this contemporary house from a very nice owner. We are going to stay here for three nights. Holly Beach is a beautiful seaside resort town, just 22 kilometers, 40 miles from the nearest main town, Devonport, which is also one of the favorite holiday destinations for the local people. Within a walking distance to the seaside, many people own a holiday house here. Such beautiful coastline, colorful rocks and clean beaches, all within walking distance. Who would not love here?
nearby is the small town of Port Sorrow and locality of Shearwater. The waters of the Bass Strait form part of the western boundary and all of the northern and eastern boundaries. The next morning, we drive along the northern coastal road of Tasmania, enjoying its beautiful coastline and landscape. Just under an hour drive on Bass Highway, we arrive at Emil Valley Rhododendron Garden. It is a remarkable private garden with a 40-year history. It is built and operated by volunteers in the northwest of Tasmania. This garden is widely known internationally, multiple award-winning Rhododendron Garden over 24,000 rhododendrons and companion plants set among 11 hectares laid out by geographical origin of the nature rhododendron within themed environments. It creates a spectacular flora display between the late August and January each year. Obviously, it's out of that season when we got here, but we can still enjoy this garden of all seasons. Its landscaping includes four lakes, waterfalls, several bridges, several gazebos, long dry stone walls, and numerous paths and internal roads. The garden is classified as a plant museum. They spread out in geographically defined areas of the garden that reflect the plain's origins from Asia across the Himalaya to Taiwan, Japan, China and North America. After visiting the stunning Emil Valley Rhododendron Garden, we are heading towards Guide Falls, a hidden jewel for the locals.
from here. We can hear the sound before we can see it. Guide Falls is one of the most beautiful waterfalls that we encountered in Tasmania. The Guide River falls around 25 meters, probably closer to 35 meters counting the upper drop, over an imposing white basalt face. An easy and picturesque 20-minute drive from Burnie, Guy Falls Reserve is a popular picnic attraction with tables and barbecue amenities. A well-maintained track with guide rails and seats to enjoy the views. Here, you can also enjoy the peaceful sound and the gentle mist of water. Leaving Guy Falls, we are on the way to Devonport. We love driving through the country area and enjoy seeing the farms and animals on the fields. Devonport is the largest port on Tasmania's north coast. Its importance, particularly for visitors from the mainland, is that it is the port for the spirit of Tasmania car ferry for Melbourne, and consequently is known as the gateway to Tasmania. It is the third most populated city in Tasmania. The name Devonport was chosen when the towns of Torquay and Formby amalgamated in 1890. The reason the new town was called Devonport was because that it was a port in the north central part of County of Devon and Tasmania's County of Devon was named because of the County of Devon in southern England. The fertile district around Devonport is known as Australia's Market Garden. It is because of its mild summers and cool, moist winters, which help to produce nearly half of Tasmania's vegetables. About just an 18 minutes drive, 20 kilometers east of Devonport, we are back to Port Sorrow and Holly Beach area. This classic seaside summer playground has an abundance of nature attractions. 
one site in particular that we've never seen in other areas of Australia is this orange hue of the rocks. It can become so bright under the sun. Studies found that this comes from lichens. British people call them lichens. They are a combination of algae and fungus that live together in a symbolic relationship. Holy House is a heritage accommodation with a fairy tale setting, complete with a white Victorian Gothic mansion and beautiful surroundings on the beach side, which make it an ideal place for weddings, birthday celebrations, and conferences. There is also a small church on site, make it perfect for photography. We love Northern Tasmania as the sceneries along the Bass Strait are all amazing. According to the study of prehistory of Australia, the shoreline of Tasmania and Victoria about 14,000 years ago were joined together by the land bridge and basin plain, which were flooded when sea level rose after the last glacier period ended at about 8,000 years ago and formed the best strait, leaving Tasmania isolated from the Australian mainland. The strait was named after English explorer and physician George Bass, born in 1771, died in 1803. Bass Strait is approximately 250 kilometers or 160 miles wide and 500 kilometers or 310 miles long with an average depth of 60 meters or 200 feet. Thank you for watching this video. Please give a thumb up and share it to others. Please subscribe to our channel and press bell for more. We appreciate your great support.